Today we're going to be talking about the Philippine National Police Special Action Force, SAF. 10 p.m. night of January 24, 2015. About 390 SAF commandos are on their way to an unfamiliar territory to carry out a classified mission. A mission which the SAF are the most capable of. The Special Action Force or SAF is an elite unit of the Philippine National Police. The members were chosen among a number of participants who had undergone a tough selection procedure. The qualified members then received special and intense training to handle operations such as raids, hostage rescue, and counter-terrorism. So already then, it's the National Police. Um, they seem like a very elite unit within the National Police. Um, something you don't see too often. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. This mission, an intelligence report allegedly from the United States, revealed that two of the most wanted terrorists in several countries are currently hiding in the marshlands of Mamasapano, Maguindanao, Philippines. The objective of the SAF is to infiltrate and capture terrorists Abdul Basit Usman and the main target, one of FBI's most wanted terrorists, Zulkifli Binhir, alias Marwan. So two very this mission, people. however, was not new to the SAF. Efforts to capture Marwan can be dated back to 2010, wherein nine consecutive attempts have been made, but none were successful. Most missions were aborted, and in some cases, Marwan was able to escape. That's most probably because he's got such a big uh, group behind him, he's so high up, he's not really doing the main jobs, he's just delegating, coming up with the plans, so he can get away. It happens uh, way too often. But this time, officials responsible of the operation were confident that the outcome would be different. With this confidence in mind, the SAF commandos prepares as they get closer to the site to carry out the mission. A mission that will forever be remembered by Filipinos. A mission named Oplan Exodus. Divided as special action companies, the SAF commandos will follow a planned route and will position at assigned locations on the map. Meanwhile, the 43rd SAC will position along the drop-off point securing both ends of the highway. The plan was estimated to be done at a specific time. However, this was unlikely. As the terrain leading to the targets was a huge obstacle for the commandos. The marshland was covered with vast areas of cornfields and deep rivers. See, Moreover, it was not their territory. Throughout the marshland, several armed groups are situated at certain areas, the largest of which are the BIFF and the MILF. The BIFF is a militant organization based in Mindanao, seeking to have an independent Islamic state for the Muslim minority. Meanwhile, the MILF, also a group in Mindanao, is an organization which seeks to separate from the central government and have an autonomous region for the Moro people. PM of January 24, Upland Exodus commenced. The 41 commandos of Seaborn, led by Superintendent Raymond Train, advances. The remaining special action companies are waiting for the right time to depart as their movements dependent on the movement of Seaborn. However, due to an unfamiliar terrain and the strong currents of the rivers, 
Seaborn did minor changes to the planned route. This caused a delay in the departure of the 55th SAC and the remaining support groups. So straight away they were already behind. But that always happens, it's very, it's very common. Um, you can have pictures and maps and you actually get on the ground and it can be completely different. So that's a test in itself, get across the river at night. surprised if he's a bomb maker. That should have been definitely at the top of their list. Meanwhile, hidden from sight, Abdul Basit Usman escapes. Unfortunately, the gunshots awoke the armed groups in the area. See, this is where you're going to have a problem. Um, you know, you could be, depending on what group that is, you could be going under negotiations to ceasefire, but they don't know you're in there. You're now basically firing within their sort of areas. So it's really going to annoy them. And God knows, let's see what happens. So this is the other group, Ow and the Mil yeah, they're both coming. Seaborn had successfully neutralized one of the world's most dangerous men. Okay, so they got him. They got one of them. Without delay, they took a DNA sample in a picture was taken. A SAF commando then sent a text message to the command saying Mike won, bingo, so doing it over which text. meant that the target was neutralized. Triumph was felt among the commandos outside as they've heard the word bingo. But that triumph won't last. As Seaborn attempts to unite with the 55th SAC for the exit, can't believe they've still done it over text, not radio comms. They were already surrounded. Meanwhile, the 55th SAC, which was delayed for hours, attempts to reach their designated waypoint. So this should have all been going on. They should have been up in place to ensure that you've got your cover. Uh, you don't want to be going into a position like that and then they're, they're not supporting you, so you want, want all your supporting uh, groups in position ready. Um, As they HR. were navigating through the cornfields of Barangay Tucanalipao, they heard men shouting around the area. Immediately, they formed a defensive perimeter. Across the river, they saw MILF members gathering near the bridge. These are the ones I got a ceasefire with. The 55th sack waited. Their only cover was the cornfield and the darkness. As dawn breaks, the 77 commandos of the 55th SAC and Seaborn are to be surrounded by over 1,000 combined members of the MILF, BIFF, and other private armed groups. But then again, they got surrounded. During this time, the SAF commandos of the 55th SAC and Seaborn continuously called for reinforcements. 
This led the remaining special action companies to advance, but then eventually retreated as they were met with gunfire. At the same time, the situation reached Staff Director Hetulio Napenas Jr., the commander who oversees the operation. At about 6 a.m., Napenas sends a message to the Army 6th Infantry Division commander informing him about the operation. However, according to the commander, he did receive a message but it did not mention the need for reinforcements. Fortunately, the said commander, Major General Pangilinan, sent out a reinforcement team after details of the ongoing firefight have circulated. Moreover, at about 8.30 a.m., the army arrived. According to the army, they saw the remaining SAF commandos just sitting on the highway. The army then asked for coordinates from two SAF commanders to locate the 55th SAC in Seaborn. Unfortunately, they don't know. This is so gone wrong. After figuring out the location, the army advances. At about 9 a.m., the army received a call from Seaborn, informing them that they are on a hill in Barangay Tucanalipao, surrounded by the MILF. However, AFP Chief of Staff General Katapang ordered his men to not engage the MILF because they don't want to endanger the ongoing peace process. The army then proceeded to extract them. But along the way, they were also met with gunfire and forced them to retaliate. Firefight lasted for several hours until the army decided to deploy white phosphorus at about 5.30 p.m. The white phosphorus are used for cover and as markers for the artillery team to calculate their location, so minimizing the risk of a friendly fire. As the armed groups saw the white phosphorus at about 6 p.m., the firefight stopped and the MILF announces that their fighters had withdrawn from the area. So it must be quite common because they knew what a white fist was for. Shortly after, the search for the 77 commandos began. But the story goes deeper than it seemed. Investigations done after the incident uncovered something behind the people responsible of the operation. It was revealed that former president and also the commander-in-chief Benigno Aquino III allowed his close friend former PNP chief Alan Purisima to participate and allegedly gave him control of the operation. However, the said PNP chief was suspended at that time, currently being investigated for an alleged graft case. 
Even so, Aquino entrusted him the operation, along with the staff director, Getulio Napenas Jr. Moreover, it was reported that Deputy Director General Leonardo Espina was supposed to be the one who had the authority to oversee the entire operation. But due to an unknown reason, he was excluded and was only informed on the morning of January 25, the MILF. Questions arise as to why Marwan was near if not within their territory. During the Senate probe on the incident, Senate Majority Leader Alan Peter Cayetano fired questions directed to the MILF, asking about their alleged role in providing a haven for the terrorists. But all of these were denied by the MILF, insisting that Marwan took refuge within the BIFF territory. This was supported by Chief Peace Advisor Teresita Deles, saying that the MILF already ended ties with the terrorists. So there's a lot of corruption going on. Uh, the plan, they were just, the, the commandos were let down right from the off. The Senate, which condemned the manner of how the SAF members were killed, labeled the incident as massacre. But the Commission on Human Rights chairperson disagrees with them, stating that categorizing the incident as a massacre is excessive. Declared successful. The tragic events of January 25, 2015 cannot and will not be forgotten by the Filipino people. During that day, families lost a father, a brother, a son, and a hero. Thus, questions and outrage remain. Who was at fault? Who is to be blamed? And has justice already been given? But one thing is certain and will surely be remembered. The bravery and sacrifice of the fallen 44. Heavily let down is what they were. It's a very interesting documentary. I think it was done very well. Uh, check out the original video in the description. It, it was a really good documentary to watch. Sadly, this, they were let down from the off. It was going to be a failed op. Uh, they didn't have the hierarchy, the top corridor looking after them. So really sad to see. Um, such a shame that 44 had to lose their lives. The commandos not going in, whether that was because the top from the top they were telling them not to go in or they were too scared. You know, you should be going in looking after your blokes. You should have that support. Sounds like it should have been an op for the army straight up, up straight away. They didn't go in with the support anyway. They were just too far back. So when they did come into contact, people couldn't push forward and uh, help them. So shame to see, um, but really enjoyed watching this. Let us know what you think. Uh, give us a comment in the comment section. Give us a thumbs up and click the subscription button and I'll see you soon.